Yumi, okay, appreciate it. Shot Town in the house. Bristol, Virginia in the house. Um, so the question is, the question of the day is basically this. Is being a good man, being a good man ain't enough. Being a good man ain't enough, and neither is being a good woman enough. Let me say that again. Being a good man is not enough. Neither is being a good woman. I am sorry if that comes as news to you. I am sorry if that is if that is upsetting to you. But I am I am I am telling you here if no one else has ever told you, let me be the first to tell you. Being a good man or a good woman Ain't enough. Let me explain to you why. Well, first of all, let me let me say this. For everybody who considers himself to be a good man, if you consider yourself to be a good man, type a one in the chat room. If you consider yourself to be a good man, I'm a good dude, a so, you know, a solid dude. I, I I'm I'm what women, you know, I'm a gainfully employed, you know. You know, tax paying, solid citizen, you know, you're a good dude. Never really gotten a whole lot of trouble. Never really been a jerk or an asshole. You know, people just say, you know what? That 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 Traverne is a nice guy. That Eric is a nice guy. That uh Malachi, I think that's Malachi is a good guy. That James Ronan is a good guy. Come on, guys. Let me know how many of you guys in the chat room will consider yourselves to be straight up just good men. Honestly, let's be real. How many of you guys in the chat room think you're good men and you think, you know what? Women should want me. Women should want me. Maybe not the dime pieces, you know, those high, high, high supermodel type chicks, you know, the, the ones that marry princes, you know, you know, royalty, you know, not the kind of chicks that are dealing with guys at the, you know, you know, making multiple million dollars a year. Those kind of women, maybe not in my range, but you know, women who are six, I don't use seven, a woman that's a six or an eight or a nine. I'm a good man, and those women should want me. Okay. One, 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 one. I'm an excellent man, and she left. One, I'm better now. Uh, how do you get that acne off your nose? Okay, um... I got I'm good I got a quick I got an answer for that. Um first thing you want to do is you gotta make sure you're washing at least twice a day. You want to make sure you're using an oil-based kind of wash too. Um with uh, there's this stuff at Ulta Beauty called like this tea tree. Tea tree soap is good, tea tree facial soap. But Murad, Murad, M-U-R-A-D, has a line that's like a $30 for a month supply. It comes with a wash. An AM and a PM moisturizer, a serum, and a spot treatment. The main thing is the salicylic acid, aspirin. You got to make sure you're cleaning your skin and in a place where you get a pimple or a bump, put this little salicylic acid, it dries clear, and it'll make sure that the, it'll, it'll, it'll kill the pimples and stuff like that, and it'll make sure it leaves no scarring. Kenzie said, you can think you're a good man. Just uh, just because you don't cheat don't make you a good man. You ain't toxic. Okay, but let me ask this other question. Because let me say this on the other side. How many women are in the chat room? If you're a woman and you're in the chat room, because you know women are, women are welcome over here. How many women are in the chat room? If you're a woman and you're in the chat room, give me a three. If you're a woman and you're in the chat room, give me a three. And if you're a good woman and you're in the chat room, Give me a five. If you're a woman, give me a three. But if you're a good woman, give me a five. Yeah. See, 
unlike a lot of places, I believe that uh, you know, there is there are some answers out here. It's just what are we willing to do to get them? If you're a woman and you're in the chat room, give me a three. If you're a good woman, give me a five. All right. I can't pronounce your name, so because I'm not really good at pronouncing names, I haven't good. Cool. Got an, I got one five. Hey, chicks really don't want a good dude. They just say they do. Hey, man, we, we ain't going to get ahead of this. We're not going to get ahead of this. And see, the thing is, right now, well, we're not, we're not going to be really talking about that part of it. I'm going to put the onus on you. Hey, dude, I've already told you, Mr. Yumi, I'm, I'm teaching something right now. If you got a question that you want prioritized, hit the super chat, man. I got videos about how to make eye contact and all that other kind of stuff. Do yourself a favor. Go to my catalogs and check or write it out. Welcome, though, for the first time. All right, what's going on, JJ Redwood? Let's just get let's just cut right to the chase. You know, I like to get a feeling of who's in the chat room. But let me tell you something. Men, being a good man, whoever told you that was supposed to be good enough? Let me ask you that. Being a good man, I'm a good man. I'm a good man. I'm a good I'm a good solid dude. Who told you that was supposed to be good enough? Whoever told you that was supposed to be good enough? Serious talk. Who told you that was good enough? See, you can, in my opinion, you can look to where a person, you can look, you can look at a person's life and see where they stopped. You can see where they stopped. Mo a lot of people stopped at high school. High school was the last time somebody put an expectation on you. If you're just a high school graduate and have a job, you're just doing, you're just, you're, you're, you're out there just doing your thing. Some people said, you know, high school isn't enough. I need to go to college. That's where they stop developing. Look at where some, look at, look at your life and say, where did I stop? And that's where you thought was good enough. Look at your life and see where you stopped. And that's where you thought was good enough. See, men and women whether they want to admit it or not, all think that they should be good enough for the majority of people. Most folks think I should be, I, I'm good enough. If not, if not, you'd be doing something about it. If you did not think you should be good enough or acceptable to the majority of people, you'd be doing something about it. For example, why'd you go to college? Why did you go to college because you didn't think high school was enough. You went to college because you didn't think high school was enough. Whether it was your idea, whether your parents' idea, somebody, it was somewhere in your line of the reason it was like, you know what? High school is here, but you get this kind of outcome with high school. If you want to get a chance to get ahead or do better or whatever, you want more, you got to do more. And I got to go to college. Why'd you go to the military? Because high school wasn't enough. See, everyone makes a choice. But the net but but you look at what the last thing you stopped doing. Where'd you stop? That's what you thought was good enough. And I'ma tell you, whoever told you there was enough. See, it's not enough to just be a good dude. It's not enough to just be a nice dude. It's not enough to just be a solid citizen. That's not enough. Not if you want. Not if you want to have your pick of women. That is and always has been the reality. When has it ever been good enough just to be a good guy? When has it ever been good enough just to be a good guy? Name me a period of history when it was good enough to just be a good guy. See, a lot of times we go back and say, you know, well, back in the day, you know, 100 years ago, a guy just had to go to work. I understand what I understand the argument. But women also didn't have a lot of it. But women also didn't have independent agency. They didn't have choice. When has it ever been? Uh, so let me reframe the question. When has it ever been good? When has it ever been good enough to just be a good guy when women actually had a choice? 
See, you can be a vegetarian all you want. But if you, well, you can, let me give a better argument. Well, yeah, it'll work. You can be a vegetarian, but if you actually find yourself waking up tomorrow on, on an island where the only thing to eat is meat, you'll find a way to eat that meat. See, the whole problem here is choice. Like it or not, today, people have choice. You do, and so do women. And being a good guy ain't enough. So this is what hurts a lot of guys. See, I had to do better. Yeah, we everybody got to do better. Guys, do me a favor. If you're if you're a member of the CIA, uh l appreciate the love on the super chat. I do. But hit the link instead, guys. Let me let me let me use you as an example. Eric Glenn, my dog. My dog. Understand something for the love you just showed, appreciate it. But at that $20 you just donated, I'll get 10 bucks. I'll get 10, maybe $12 of it. And I won't get that until like January. Yeah, of the love my dog Eric just showed, I'll get like $12 of it and I won't get it till like January. January. I'm not, I don't understand why, maybe it's just habit, but guys, hitting the link, you can still use your PayPal, you can still use your credit card, you can use whatever way to donate you want to. Keeps your name um, protected. And it just goes direct. Yeah, yeah, cool. I appreciate it. It has never been good enough to be a good guy. Being good enough, really, honestly, guys, let's be honest. Saying, you know what, I'm a good guy and that, and that should be good enough, really is just another way of saying I'm too lazy to do anything else. And uh, I'm too lazy to do anything else. And, 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 and I don't want to work anymore. See, let me flip the argument up. You get upset when women say, just accept me as I am. This whole fat acceptance culture and everything else. Men think, a lot of men think, well, that's just another way of women telling us we got to accept, you know, you being out of shape and this and that. And we push back against that. Well, so the same thing about being good enough. The reality is. And ladies too, don't you ain't getting out of here, ladies. I'm getting, I'm getting on getting your your ass in a minute. I'm gonna get on your ass in a minute, but I'm gonna do it in love because you need to be hollering. You need to get yourself good enough to get with my CIA men. See, in reality, guys. In reality, yeah, looks do matter. Looks matter a lot to women, not just black women, all women. I have this thing called Suit Saturdays, right? Where I say, hey, just throw on a suit on Saturday and just see what happens. If you're on my Instagram, you saw me talk about not your old boring suit where I just had on this like alpaca wool casual like suit, right? It's even here on YouTube. I walked around wearing that yesterday and everywhere I went, people will stop me. I'm actually on my phone editing a video. Three fine women come up and say, ah, excuse me, just have to ask you, where are you from? We would just want, I mean, fine women. One, one, his, one Asian chick, two black chicks. Bad. I'm looked up, I'm like, and they're like, we just, huh? and it's only because I was wearing a suit and a turtleneck. See, it's not a matter of knowledge, guys. Here's the thing. It's not a matter of knowledge. J.J. Redwood, you know it's not a matter of knowledge. Eric Glenn, you know it's not a matter of knowledge. It's not a matter of information. It's a matter of, one, you don't feel like you should have to do it. And that is one thing that I, that is one thing that I know men got to get over. I don't give a damn what you like or don't like. I don't give a damn what you feel like you should or should not have to do. I don't give a damn if you're not happy with the outcomes. If you're not happy with the outcomes, you have to do something differently. So do I. And being a good man ain't enough. If you think that just because you got a good credit score, you got a degree, a middle class job, credit cards, paying your own bills, that overcomes Women wanting to sleep with you, women looking at you and not being sexually attracted. You got another damn thing coming. Looks do matter. 
Appearance does matter. Sexual sexual chemistry matters. Game matters. Body matters. It's not enough to just be a good guy and think beautiful women are going to want you. Now, see, you can't do anything with the genetic lottery. You look the way you look. You, I mean, your face is the way it is. You can do something about your hair, your, your facial hair, the hair on your head. You can't do something about the glasses on your face, the, the hat on top of your head. You, can, you can't necessarily do something about your height. You are the height you are, but you can't do something about the shoes on your feet. You can always do something about your body. You can get your ass in the gym and do, you can get your ass in the gym or you can even do what Herschel Walker did. Don't hit the gym. Do some push-ups, pull-ups, squats, crunches. Guys, got to be honest. Do you look like a man or woman will want to forget? Hmm. Put the kids to bed. Do you look like a man or woman will want to have sex with? That matters. It matters because, like it or not, women have choice today. They don't have to marry you because y'all are from the same hometown. It matters. Men, you got to compete. Yeah, you got to compete. That means you can't. That means if you're walking around at 30 plus years old, 40 years old, in some baggy jeans, graphic t shirt, pop belly. Scruffy looking hair, no cologne, hat turned backwards or something, you know, dirt under your fingernails, some sneakers or whatever. You can and you expect the bad chick to want to be with you. You out of your damn mind. You're going to get the best of the worst as possible. Those are the chicks that are going to check for you. And those are the chicks you're going to check for because you're not going to try to do anything better because you know you don't fit there. Guys, you know, you know that you know that's you know, being a good guy ain't enough. So the question becomes, if you know being a good guy ain't enough and if you don't and even if you don't like exactly the way I put it, look at your social life. Look at your social life and look at your um, look at the chicks in your DM. Look at the chicks who calling you, texting you. Are they the chicks you want? Are they the chicks that you can just get? Are there, are there none out there? If there are none out there, women outnumber men in this regard, especially black women. There are three million more black women than black men in marrying age. That means the numbers are in your favor. Here's, a, here's where it's about to hurt. You're not getting, you're not getting the best access. You're not getting the best women because you ain't good enough. You're not getting the, you're not getting the best because you're not good enough. Simple as that. You're not better than the dudes you think they should. So you can get mad at Dirty Dick Rodney, Pookie Ray Ray, Brad Chad, you know, Rico Suave, but they ain't worried about you. They got an overload. You, you can sit back and look at AMS, Donovan, and all these guys and be like, man, these guys got it lucky because it is to that. What are you doing? What are you doing with what you got? How many of you guys actually say, you know what? <laughs> He's right. I'm not doing enough. I, I just thought being a good guy is enough and, and they should want me. No, they don't. And they never have. Really, they never have. Women want good looking, good smelling, good feeling men too. And if you think that you're going to wait until you're 40, 50 and think it's all of a sudden going to change and all of a sudden, you know, the economy is going to make women want you. No, nah, let me go ahead and be real. I don't care what happens in the next wave of economy. Women going to be all right for a long time, at least for your lifetime. There is no cataclysmic event short from a zombie apocalypse that's going to turn women that are dime pieces of fine women from wanting that to picking you. Not in mass. One by one, maybe. But in mass, you want better outcomes, you're going to have to do better. And even if it wasn't about broad, it needs to still be about you. See, the thing is, when you say good enough, when you say I'm good, I shouldn't have to improve, you're basically telling the world you're happy with where you are. You're happy with being a 10 and 6 football team. You don't want a Super Bowl. I'm good at 10 and 6. I'm good at 9 and 7. You know, I'm not failing with 9 and 7. We can get into the wild card game every now and then, which means basically you get laid every now and then. Glad I can catch this one. Continue to do what you do. Appreciate it, fam. Increasing my savage. Pre love. Appreciate it, fam. You can be, you know, most of you got a lot of wild card dudes out here. 
A lot of wild card dudes. What's a wild card dude? Robert Lee, what's a wild card dude? Here's what a wild card dude is. You know what they are. They're the kind of dudes that if me and my boy Robert went out in Memphis. Me and my boy Robert went out in Memphis. Robert know he can pull whatever he want. He got a shot at pulling whatever he want. Robert know he can go make it happen. Wherever Robert go, he know he can make it happen. Robert's a big dude. But he got that voice and that presence. He's a man's man. He's a damn man. He, he, we and Robert, uh, I, I speak one way, Rob speak another, but he's an intelligent man. And Robert know that he could walk in anybody. We'd be like, okay, let's see who's going to pull the baddest. We're going to see what we can do. How much? How much success? Then we would go in and look at a bunch of other dudes and they just sitting over there and they looking for the woman to do everything. Make the move, approach everything else. And you're just like, well, I can pay a bill and take her out to dinner, but you can't make nothing happen. That's an NFL wild card team. You're not in the game to win the Super Bowl. You're just in it to get out of regular season, to just get laid every now and then, to go on a date every now and then, to have things happen every now and then, but nothing, 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 nothing is within your control because there is no plan. There are no requirements to be with you. You are just content because you are good enough. Good enough means you stop trying. There is no elevation. There is no next level. It is this until you die. And that is a damn shame because it does not have to be. If the last time you pushed yourself and challenged yourself to do anything was because a teacher or a professor told you to, a drill instructor told you to, somebody, your parent told you to, somebody other than yourself told you to, you cannot get upset that women see that you are not assertive and motivated. CIA, confident, intelligent, assertive. See, that's where it all comes down to image. Women are social creatures. And whether you understand it, whether you agree with it or not, women can look at dudes and pretty much see. Yeah, you can just look at a guy at a glance and tell whether or not he's possibly about some. I didn't say definitively. I said possibly. See, the reason a lot of you guys get mad at Pookie and Ray Ray and all this other kind of stuff is because they don't have all this degree and money and Credit access. They don't have all that other all that other stuff. All they got is they had to get good at social game. They had to get good at all this other stuff that you don't think you should have to do. They had to get good at it because they didn't have the other stuff. But it's the very stuff that they're good at, the stuff that you disdain, the things that you don't think you should have to do. It should not matter. It's superficial. It's all this. It's that very shit that gets women wet and make them want to be with you. It's that shit that makes companies want to hire you and promote you. There's a reason why you can have guys who are above you who have less skills than you who are not as good as you. Because they're better at playing the game. They're better at playing the politics. You can be as right as you want to, but I am so fucking sick of you guys wanting to be right so much and not getting the outcome. You live your life trying to be right all the goddamn time, but your life ends up going wrong. You are content because you don't want to do the goddamn work and you want the outcome. Well, son, I'm telling you, the world does not work that way. Nobody cares about your problems. Nobody cares about your sad story. Nobody cares about black, white, white supremacy, racism. Get your ass onto the into the race. Line up and run. Being good is not good enough. You look here in the black manosphere. Look at your content creators. Everyone's always improving. Some go this way, some go that way. But you can't look back and see three years ago and people doing the same shit. You got to do more. And if you don't, well, here's the thing. You don't have to do more. But if you don't do any more, shut up. You can't complain. You cannot complain. You don't vote. You can't complain. How many times do you see somebody who complains about who's in office, the part, president, and so forth, and you ask the defining question, who'd you vote for? Oh, I didn't vote. Shut the fuck up. Because right there by saying they did not vote, they disqualified themselves in the conversation. They lack credibility. You're good enough. And what was the last thing you tried to do? Your degree? That's not good enough. Your job? That's not good enough. Never has been. I say men need to be CIA, confident, intelligent. Assertive. The last part is in doing. Now, ladies, don't think 
I'm not about to cook you. Don't think I'm just going in on the men because here's the one thing I will give the guys. Here's one thing I will give guys. Guys can at least look at themselves and be like, yeah, man, I do need to do better. Oh, man, he all up my Kool-Aid, man. He, he hitting it. But see, ladies, what about you? We're going to take a break right now. I'm going to go to the chat room, see what's going on before I go into the next part. Here is your trigger alert warning. Here is your trigger alert warning. If you are easily triggered, ladies, this you might want to leave. If you do not like broad generalizations about a broad segment of the population that's generally true most of the time, you might leave. If this does not mean you, your mama, your cousin, or some people you know in your neighborhood or some in the school you went to, you might want to leave. None of that matters with what I'm about to say. If you're interested in actually getting your one-on-one consult with me, use a link down here to book your one-on-one Skype consult. Use that one hour to find out your style, personality, what will look best on you, and the fundamentals you need to build a solid men's wardrobe that will carry you through a lifetime. If you're interested in some one-on-one actual life coaching to help you get past the A, B, C, D, the A part's your appearance, but the B, the B, the C. Stop self-sabotaging yourself. Start learning how to really get, gather yourself. Learning how to be more assertive. Learn how to be more confident. Work on your self-esteem. It is life coaching in the version of image. I'm not a relationship coach. I'm not a game coach. There are better ones out there, and it's not me. It is not psychological either. If you actually are schizophrenic, bipolar, or need medication, seek help over there, but you still need this part over here. This is a very valuable. You can look good, but if you don't have this part over, you can have all that good you can be good enough here but if you don't have game you still gonna be dry high and dry hit me up at info at kevin sam hit me up at info at by kevin samuels to get more information if you're not a patron of the channel what the hell are you waiting for hit that link five dollars will at least get you to be able to see the broad rebroadcast of every live stream i do after i do live streams guess where they go they go to patreon and I drop at least anywhere from three to eight pieces of content that are Patreon only. That never see anything with Patreon. All right. That is the Dat Gum link to pay your tuition to show love on the channel. And by the way, if you have a question that you want to have answered, like, Kevin, what's a good cologne for me to wear? So what? this is how you take care of that. You hit, you hit that. I got a service for almost anything. So that's what that is. All right. What the heck? I'm sorry. Hold on just a second. So. Thought I saw Cashmere Funk in the house. What's going on, buddy? Oh, man. Ah. Uh -huh. You guys, if you guys are enjoying this stream, man, let me know. If you guys are enjoying this stream, let me know. Oh, that's it. Okay. I'm sorry, that was me. Technical difficulty. So, y'all ready for part two? Yeah, ladies. Shout out to Fitzroy. Ladies. 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 Man, I love women. Love you women. Especially women who have the nerve to come over to the manosphere. And the call line is in. But ladies. Whoever... If you are one of the women that said you're in here and you think you're good, 
then you have your ma- you got your bachelor's, you got your master's, you you got your business together. You are out here earning, doing what you need to do. You taking care of your own bills, such and so forth. All that stuff on paper, you will be a solid partner. You would make a good logical choice to be a partner. Whoever told you that was good enough? See, the first thing I'm going to ask you, ladies, is whoever told you that was good enough, I'm going to say, what did your daddy tell you? And most of you are going to go quiet. 70% of you are going to go quiet. Because I say, what did your daddy tell you when you was growing up? Cricket as quiet. Because your daddy didn't teach you nothing because you don't know your daddy wasn't raising you. Like mine. I didn't have mine. So you had your mother telling you what to do. Your mother, your auntie, your grandmother. Either way, you had a bunch of women telling you what you needed to do. Go get your degree and all that other stuff. Let me let you know on something, ladies. Men don't care about none of the stuff you have. If so, when was the last time you saw a fat, ugly chick with a PhD that had men just all over her? Damn, she fat, ugly, rusty, crusty, and she just can't get the high-value men off of her. Man, she has an 800 credit score. That ain't what happens. The stuff you think is important is good enough ain't. And when has it ever been good enough? When has the man ever really picked in mass, picked women based on what she had? And if they do pick you on what you have, you are just what it was, a sugar mama. That's what we really get down to. Ladies, let me get let me give you a hint. Beauty matters. If men need to be CIA, confident, intelligent and assertive. Women, those kind of men want women who are FBI, feminine, beautiful, inspirational. No feminine, no go. Not long term. You may be good for a, you may be good for a, a, a screw. You may be good for some sex, but not to get wife or the ring. That's just reality. Beauty. Yes, there is a universal standard of beauty. Let me tell you what it is. Femininity. Clear skin, symmetrical body. This is universal. Give you some strong parameters. If you are four, if you are five foot to five foot four in height, and you are 30 or under, you need to be a size six or less. I don't give a shit about what race you are, how many kids you had, or what none of that. Size six or less. From 30 to death. Size eight or less. That's after kids, everything else. Yes, you too, black woman. And if you're five, nine or higher, you can go up to size 10. But no more. Oh, damn. What does that mean? That means you need to be get in. The, that means you need to go work out. See, a lot of a lot of women, the last time you actually worked out was in high school. The last time you worked out was when you were forced to work out in high school. And I don't know what it is. I know we used to have recess and you had gym. The last time you had gym was the last time you've been to the gym. Let me give you a hint, chick. Nobody cares about your fat ass. That just means the fat landed where guys like it. That 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 is hurting you. There's a difference between what they want to sleep with and what they want to get with. And there's a reason that you see women out there wanting to keep good, high value men. They're going to have to compete. Yes, ladies, you have to compete because men are the prize. I don't again. Stop listening to single women. They're single for a reason. You need to listen to women who at least accept the red pill. And even if they are have been married or divorced, what are their views on men? Do men actually come around them, congregate around them? Uh uh-uh. uh. You need to listen to single men. Single men tell you what they want. We want women who are more natural than not. Not a lot of makeup. In shape, feminine, beautiful, inspirational, and a cooperative. All this masculine, loud-talking attitudes, that's just good for a, a, a nice rogering. You can get it, but not long-term. Ladies, 
No man cares about the stuff you bring to the table until he wants to get with you, until he wants to have sex with you. Shout out to Obsidian. Yeah. She may have a heart of gold, but what does that do for my dick? You may not like it. You may think that's crass, but guess what? What you think doesn't matter. Let me say that again. You may not like it. You may not accept it, but what you as a woman think doesn't matter. You only control access to sex. Men control access to relationships. And from the age of 12 to 30, what did you do with your prime years? Really from 12 to 25, what did you do with your prime years? Was your priority getting the best, highest value man you could get, marrying him, and building with him a lifetime? No, it wasn't. It was all about you, what you wanted, where you wanted to go to school, what you wanted to do, your job, your career, your this, your dad, such and so forth. Great. Your life was about you. Great. While other groups of women can still do all that, but learn, you know, from around junior, sophomore year in college, junior in college, they need to put up all that stuff and start prioritizing a man. Now you're out here in your late 20s, early 30s, lonely, I mean, single as hell. People can tell you how nice you look. Oh, you fine. You look good. All that does not matter. Look, you're in bed. It's 11 o'clock right now. Next to you is either a dog, a cat, or an empty space. That tells you what? It's not good enough. Feminine, beautiful, inspirational women never lack for positive masculine attention. I didn't say a man. You can always get some dick. But does anybody want the dick that you can get? Let me say that again. You can always get some dick. Does anybody want the dick that you can get? Looking at O'Shea's show earlier today, women talking about, oh, I got men going to me left and right, but who wants those men? See, it's nothing for a woman to get laid. Yeah, you can. Yeah, I can get any kind of man. Good. Who wants him? The kind of man you know you damn well want is going to put requirements on you. You might as well do them for yourself. There is no downside to you being feminine, beautiful, inspirational for yourself. Just like there's no downside for being confident, intelligent, assertive for a man. Hold on, dude. Who is this? In the chat room, Philip. Philip Lee Kinsey. Hey, dude, you come in here talking, answer my call. I'm on the line from the UK. And you can wait. I don't know you. See, let me give you guys a tip on how to manage your image online. If I don't know you, if we've never talked, you need to assume that everything that you, you need to understand the stuff that you type has no context or tone. You don't come to a complete stranger and demand that they do anything. You're in my house, you're on my show. So, and I'm not to the, I'm not there yet. And when I get there, I'll take them in. I'm not to the answering the portion. See, the net net of it is this, what it comes down to. The men or women that this message rubs on your, grates on your nerves or is bothering you, it's because the truth of it, you don't like the truth of it. You can see the outcome and the results in your lived life. 
It doesn't matter if I'm 100% on everything I said. The results of your lived life shows you what it is. You're making the amount of money you're making because that's all you're good. You're making what you're making right now, especially if that's the company you're, you're working at, because that's all you negotiated. That's all you negotiated, and that's all you decided to make. If you didn't negotiate your starting salary, you took what somebody gave you. You didn't decide and say, you know what? I need to make, I'm worth $120,000, but I'm getting 30. Why would you get 30 if you're worth 120? Well, that's all that's out there. Then go make a $120,000 opportunity. Ah, but that requires work. That requires effort. Bottom line is men and women have to understand you cannot, life is about evolution. Life is about growth, constant movement. If you are sitting down after you get off work, if you're, if you're just sitting there wanting to be entertained, if you're sitting there waiting for someone to bring it to you, you can't complain about not getting what it is you want out of life. All right, let's see what's going on here. <clears throat> yes, I'm taking calls. The call line is open. This is how it's going to go. When you're on the call line, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to call. I'm going to say, hey, caller, what's your first name and where are you calling from? You're going to tell me your first name and where you're calling from. Then I'm going to say, what do you have to add to the discussion? You're going to say what you have to add to the discussion. You're not going to run on, you know, you're not going to get up here and give a monologue. You got a question, make it a short question. Don't have a run on question. And then allow me to answer. If we get into a discussion and if I start to speak, you need to let me speak. Don't try to talk over me because then I'll mute you. Be respectful and I'll be respectful to you. All right. 404, caller, what's your first name? Uh, this is Nicole from Atlanta. How you doing, Kevin? Hey, Nicole from Atlanta. How are you? I'm awesome. What do you got for us? Well, nothing. I was just listening in. I told you I'd give you a call on the air. Um, He's giving some pretty good information to the sisters. So I hope they listen. Hope they um soaking up that game. Right. You know or doing what you're doing. Well so so on the portion of being a being good is not good enough for the women. Can you can you please speak to that? Because I know as a man a lot of times women may or may not receive me. Maybe they'll receive you. You got the floor. Well, um, not being good, it's it's sort of like accepting mediocrity as the um, the standard. And I think black people as a whole, and I'm just you know using that um, just in general. But um, I think people in general, society just accepts mediocrity, and we we even let that roll over into our relationships. I remember a time where you could fly uh, when people, you know, rode the airplane, they dressed up and they looked nice. Now it's, you see flip-flops, you see all kinds of crap on airlines. And that just speaks to how our society has become lax. And we don't really care about how we look. Mm -hmm. We don't care about how we come across people's perception of us. We really just don't care. And even in the workplace, it's just very, very lax. So that's kind of rolled over into our relationships a little bit. Um, well, we don't really put much effort into it. And we expect the best from other people. And that's the caveat there, that we give them mediocrity. We give them whatever we feel that day. And we expect the best out of them. In my movement, the interview movement, I tell women that you cannot be 
an alpha masculine energy woman and expect a masculine energy man, you'll butt heads because you're just alike. Mm -hmm. You have to be feminine. That is not negotiable. That is just what it is. Two, two of the same energies can occupy the same space. Not have harmony anyway. But people don't want to change. They are dedicated to their dysfunction. They're dedicated to mediocrity. Mediocrity, and this is why most marriages fail. I was I won't say most. I would say about fifty percent, fifty five percent is holding. Uh, half of marriages fail. The majority of relationships don't even make it to that status because people just don't put in the effort. And um, I get tired of seeing brothers talking about how fine they want their woman to look, how feminine they want her to be, how submissive they want her to be. Mm -hmm. And then when I look at them, I'm like, okay, I never see you in some nice slacks. I never see you in a sports coat. Mm -hmm. I never see you in a suit. I never see you in anything nice that would make a woman just, oh, let me step it up and get some brother. You want a skirt and heels, but I never see you come, come correct, ever. Mm -hmm. Like, do you ever come out of your boots? Do you ever, you know? So, so, so we, you know, it's nice to have requirements for other people, but it's like I tell the lady and ladies in my movement, when you, you got to turn over the sheet of paper and you have to talk about what you can offer them. And when we put it in those terms, would the person you want want you? That changes the game. It should. Okay. You should be like, oh wait. <laughs> so let me ask. So yeah. let me. So let me do this. I'm gonna get on the guys. I, I'll get to the guys, but I, I also like the fact in your movement, you put it out there, the reality, but you also leave some hope and some to dos. If women are for those women who are listening that are, who are open to getting better, what are some things you know? Give them a couple of three things that they can do to, or start working on to actually get the better outcome that they want outside of following you. We, you guys need to follow uh, Nicole's inner beauty movement. Uh, you can put the links to your uh, stuff in the chat room, but give them two or three things that they can actually work on. Um, so they can't just sit around and say, well, all, all problem and no solution. Go ahead. Sure. Um, first, start by um, identifying what it is you want. A lot of women are just out here freestyling, and they don't even know what they want, and yet they have so many requirements for men. Well, you can't attract what you really want uh, if you don't know what it is that you really want. And be honest with yourself. Do you just do you want to be married, or do you just want to have a boyfriend? Do you just want a casual date? What is it that you want? Hone in on that. And then, you know, fix your life to attract that type of man. The simple things that I tell women to do is get into your feminine core because that will solve about 90% of your problems. A lot of American women are so masculine energy, so manly, they don't even realize it, how they come off in their demeanor, their tone, their presentation. And that's not all their fault. It is society. I won't go into that. Feminism, I won't go into that. But... Uh, three things they can really do like overnight to make to see immediate changes is one, get into your feminine core. You can contact me on Interbeauty TV uh, and interbeautymovement.org to learn more about that. That will solve 90% of your problems as a woman, whether you're in a relationship or not, whether you intend to be married or not, you will attract masculine energy by default because masculine energy men are attracted to feminine women. Two, you need to smile. A lot of women walk uh -oh. around with grimaces uh -oh. on their faces. Uh -oh. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I got to stop you there. Hold the phone. Hold the phone. You said they need to smile. Now, I got to hold the phone right there because my friend Nicole po made a post out there. And the brothers had to ride in to her, to her assistance because they was trying to lynch my friend. All she asked was the sister to smile at every brother they saw. Nicole, what happens when you smile at just the average man walking down the street? Nothing, nothing in particular. You just pass them one side of the hall, they pass you another, and you smile. Can you tell us what happens? Well, I mean, it, it, it loosens up his defenses. 
And what I tell women on my movement is you have to understand, you have the Me Too movement going on. You have women falsely accusing men of all kinds of stuff. Uh, some of it's true, but a lot of the men are just going to the needle. They don't know whether to approach, you know, the street harassment. The men don't know what to do anymore. They're afraid, literally afraid to approach women. So a smile is a feminine way a woman can communicate, hey, you know, the guard is down, you know, not guard is down, but um, I'm open, I'm receptive, mm-hmm. I'm nice, I'm warm, and it's sort of like a, um, a, a nonverbal icebreaker to let a man know it's okay. Now, even if she is not uh, attracted to the man, she's not soliciting a man to approach her, nothing's wrong with the smile. She hasn't lost anything by smiling. And that was the pushback that I was getting was, I don't want all these men approaching me. And then when I would click on their profiles, I was like, oh my God, who was approaching you? You should be smiling all the time. You're not, the, you're not Halle Perry, okay? You're not Beyonce. Stop it. Um, it doesn't hurt you to smile. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't cost you anything. And you touch other people's lives just with the smile. Femininity is just that powerful. Um, and I've had women respond to me favorably. I've had things given to me for free. Mm-hmm. I've had people give up seats for me. People break their necks, back, back, everything to accommodate me because of the energy I met just from a simple smile uh, compared to all the women that are grimaces. Number two is a good attitude. Mm-hmm. And that comes from inner, inner healing and being happy yourself. A lot of sisters, a lot of women in general are just walking around upset and bitter and mad about the past. And when you dissect it, it's something that happened when they were five, six years old. I get it. Right. But you know what? In order for you to attract the type of man that you want, a healthy man, you got to deal with those demons. you got to deal with the past, get a professional, talk about it, talk to somebody that you can open up to, trust, and get healing. Mm-hmm. And that you can't nurture anybody, uh, especially a man, if you're hurt, because right. all you're going to do is spread more hurt. So you got to be um, on that. And the third thing that I would tell women is improve the things that you can improve. And that means your body, your health, uh, what you put in your body, what you put out. That includes men. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, watch watch what you intake. Watch what you watch on television. A lot of women walking around with bad attitudes towards men and uh, bad attitudes in general is because of stuff they see on TV. It's not even things that has happened to them actually. It's things that they want to turn the TV off. Sometimes you just got to detox. Mm-hmm. Um, and 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 um, and that and that's pretty much what I would have to say to women is work on your weight. And I know we harp on weight, but really, uh, women got diabetes, heart disease, uh, all of those things can be curved when we take control of our weight. And as we age, we kind of rely on that. Oh, I have kids, I'm aging, I'm this and that. But older women can still stay in the game with older men, you know, if they stay as useful looking as possible. Uh, and a lot of women get discouraged. I had a one woman who uh, sent me an email. Oh, you know, I'm un- enrolling in your course uh, in your monthly subscription because I'm older and this and that. I said, no, no, no. Femininity is a journey. Mm-hmm. And you have to admit that you made some choices that you cannot do. There's consequences to everything. But mm-hmm. listen, as an older woman, no, you can't compete with a 20-year-old, but you can be the best 40-year-old or 50-year-old you can be. Right. And that is that you look as youthful as you can be. Stay in shape, eat right, have a pleasant attitude, and be feminine and get in the game. Well, that I- is. I appreciate you calling in, sis. Um, and, you know, I'm going to say this. You know, Nicole works. Nicole works her ass off. I mean, I thought I had a work ethic. I, I thought O'Shea had a work ethic. But y'all may not see her on YouTube as much, but on Facebook, this woman is putting it out. Bang, bang, bang. I'm like, damn, you you get me up when I'm taking a nap sometime. I'm like, this no, she didn't. Let me get my ass up. You got for men, for for black men and black women to speak on this topic, especially from the position we're coming from. It takes a lot. We take a lot of slings and arrows. And I'm going to tell you, this woman takes a lot of slings, too. Even if you just watched the previous show, 
with my brother O'Shea's channel, you know, you can just look at the two opposite ends of the spectrum. Just look at the panel. Just turn the volume down and look. And that's what I tell people about the image. Look at one woman, look at another woman. And that's the difference between a feminine and a masculine. All the things she's talking about are two different things. I know you're tired, Nicole. I'm going to go ahead and let you get off. I'm going to finish talking about this. Please do me a favor. Put all your links down in the description, okay. and I got to get you back on the show. Okay? Appreciate this. All right. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, you know, I don't want to... Okay, guys, when you call in, the, the screen is not going to allow you to do any anonymous calls. So that's if you're doing 111 blocking your number. So understand something. Femininity has no restriction on age. Let me tell you something right now. Men, I don't care how fucked up your life is. I don't care how bad your credit is. I don't care if you could be living on your homeboy's couch working at Burger King right now, walking to work. You can get better. I've been there. And people are like, man, look at that suit. Look at this. Look, bro, I got shit to tell you. If I, I got stuff that I'm just not going to put on YouTube, but I'll just tell you. I have been at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom behind some simping and behind some bad life choices. All legal, but just, man, everybody goes through shit. But you know when when it started getting better for me is when I decided I was like you know what only place to go is up you can get better life is still left to be out there let me tell you something about women forty year old women you don't need to be trying to compete with twenty something first off you can't and the, and the best thing you don't have to a fine a feminine forty year old woman I would take her over a, a, a smoking twenty five year old any day you give me a forty year old woman that that's in the gym, in shape, feminine. Oh, man, shit, where is this chick? I need to show y'all some fine-ass 40-year-old women and understand something. Boy, boy, there's something to be said about a woman who's who feminine, got her stuff together, and not still out here in that young stuff. Let's be real, dude. If you're 40 years old, plus, you're not trying to go to the club every weekend. You want to sit back in the house, smoke a cigar, have on your velvet smoking jacket, your cool shoes, a nice scotch or a cognac or brandy, doing what you do. Man, you you want some high class shit. Every even if that's not on the shit you on, even if you even if you just on some Netflix and chill stuff. You want a woman who is going, she's going to compliment your life. I'm hard on the dudes because I know we men have had a lot of shit going on. But I'm, people keep talking about the cologne and stuff I have over here. You know why I got all this cologne around me? Before I was ever a YouTuber, before I was ever on YouTube, I still had my ad agency. When I came over here, I started my style business. I would be doing the same stuff I'm doing right now if I had no subscribers. I do this because I be this. These fragrances make me feel good. I like smelling like Nasamato Pardon when it's 45 degrees outside. I like wearing my nice three-piece suit. But let me tell you something. You guys are talking about this suit, how much, how nice it looks. Would you believe this suit cost me less than $300? $5,000 worth of suit got it for less than 300 bucks. You're going to know how to do things like that. Book your consult with me. Get your one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> <laughs> I got no problem with talking to me. And here's the thing. I love when people come in here talking about, oh man, you begging for donations. You trying to make money. You, I am on YouTube to become a rich man. I am not on YouTube to stay middle class. My boy, I mean, the dude, Aaron Moreno, uh, Antonio Serrano, Real Men, Real Style, um, Jose Zaniga, man, I'm, hey, up to millions of subscribers. This is, I want to help me get the style and image better and still have a red pill movement. I'm doing something a lot of other people want to do. I'm doing it a different way. But this channel is always about business. It's always about money. It's always, and I make no bones about it. As a matter of fact, I want to run as many broke-minded people that don't want to get better up out of here. Because life is about energy transference. We all got to be able to get better. All got to get better. You may not like it, but Hugh Hefner, who can say they wouldn't like to go out like he did? 90 plus surrounded by beautiful women.
My my girl Nicole came on the show. Let me tell you something else. Let me say this. I said, I, I, you know how un, you know how you know men are so not used to being around feminine women. We don't even know how to identify them. Someone on the panel tonight said, you know, they didn't necessarily agree with her point of view because you know she came on the panel and. She had makeup on, her hair was done, and she was dressed like a woman. That to me, and I saw people in the chat co-signing. I'm like, you, no, she's she's a woman. She has on light makeup. Her hair is just in a nice straight style. She has on pearls, and she has on a blouse, a sleeveless top, a sleeveless top. Men are so not used to seeing women dress like women but some guys are like, yeah, she's out here showing this and that. The woman has an ample bosom. That would be no different than somebody saying Charles Faulkner showing off because he got huge traps. I'm like, what the French toast? Or somebody showing off their bald head or their beard. We wouldn't do that with a man. Guys, you need to understand how far you are from, from having normal. Men in general, brothers in particular, we have to raise your standard. That's why I say get all those negative people out of your life that aren't trying to get better because honestly mythologizing and romanticizing the struggle dysfunction is not healthy i want it to be a distant memory for you under 300 yes yep yep so um if you're not from if you cannot call in because you're out of the country or something like that. Um, excuse me. You're out of the country. I do have Skype available and I do have my web conferencing. If you would like to connect in the show. So if you're interested in connecting in on the show, you can, you can call in via Skype. You can do Skype audio. Um, or you could, or you could connect via zoom USA. Uh, and if you don't want to be on camera, you can turn your camera off. Yeah. He was trying to be, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. But we can't, you know, I got why he was doing it, but it was just incorrect. So here's what I'm gonna do guys. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, it is not and it has never been enough to just be a good person. It has never been. Life is competitive. There are plenty of good football teams that don't win the Super Bowl. There are plenty of good I know we I know we have this sense in our life that it, everything shouldn't be so competitive. But you know what that really means? We've gotten that soft as a world. We don't have to compete. I mean, we're sitting on YouTube now on a high-speed internet connection that I know for a fact you're getting 100 megabits downstream to your smartphone. 20 years ago, there was a show, there was, there was, what was it? You've Got Mail. Tom Hanks, Meg Ryan. When people were talking about AOL, a lot of you guys don't know what that is. America Online, people were downloading emails at 14.4K. To get a T1 connection, which is 28 megabits per second, I want to say 24, 28, I, I, the math escapes me right now. To get that fiber optic connection from the central office where your phone call came in to your place of residence, they would actually have to tunnel it out, build it out to you. And you'd have to pay a monthly fee just to get a connection. That was anywhere from $700 to $5,000 a month. To get a T3, which is 48 megabits per second, which is 28 T1s, it will cost you around $15,000 just for the pipe. You're getting two, maybe three times that speed to your 
mobile device. See, I used to sell this stuff. I know how what you got in your pocket. You have a supercomputer, can high speed connect to the internet, and you guys got, and we got a nerve to be getting mad because it because it buffers every now and then. If you had to pay for what you got, you'd appreciate it more. And that just shows you how entitled we've become, how soft we've become. No one, you're not entitled to a mate. You're not entitled to a wife or a woman. And woman, you ain't entitled to a husband. You got to compete. And you will always lose to the people who think like I do and like Nicole and Michelle does. You will always lose to us. You will always lose to us. And you will always get pissed because you're losing because we're out there doing. See, what I said is she works. I work. You got to do the work. You got to do the work. I don't feel like I work enough. And if you got to look at the people who are winning, and if they don't feel like they work enough, you got to say, when did I start working? Why did I get... You got to raise your expectation and your work level for you. Don't know what that motivation is for you on an individual level? That's why you need to actually start working, getting into some coaching so you can actually get your own fire started. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you attract what you are. If you don't like what you're attracting, you got to understand. You're just attracting who you are. Let me see if we got any questions in the chat room. Somebody asked what, what happened to the video. What the, oh, it's on Patreon. Every video I live stream, uh, I'm starting to play music on the entry now. Uh, I have to go out and re-edit it and get it uploaded onto Patreon. It gets on, upload on the Patreon. Pull up your pants. Yeah. Yeah, we get ticked. The thing has to buffer. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing how uh, entitled we become. All right, guys. That was it. That's it for the show. Uh, let me go ahead and read off these. Let me see if there are any questions. Let me see if we can read off some of these super chats. Appreciate you guys for showing up. Uh, oh, shout out to Surf Organics. He just uh, became a patron. Shout out to Joe the Trucker. Thanks for the valuable information. Appreciate it, fam. Shout out to uh, Lynch. Shout out to, oh yeah, uh, to Blackmail Media. Straight ahead. Appreciate it. Shout out to JJ Redwood. Shout out to Mr. Whitmore. Shout out to uh, Eric Glenn. Admit I have to do better. We all got to do better, man. Shout out to my boy, Robert Lee. Shout out to Fitzroy. We need to holler at you, Fitzroy. Glad I can catch this one. Continue to do what you do. I'm working on increasing my savage. Yeah, we need to get into that savage, ruthless image thing, too. Shout out to Mr. Bell for becoming a Patreon. And shout out to uh, Joe Walsh. Tuition payment. Appreciate the knowledge. Man, I love you guys. Appreciate it, too. All right, guys, that's it. That's enough for today. Do yourself a favor. Um, if you haven't, if, I got a, several live streams I'm updating from, and uploading tonight. If you haven't saw my latest video where I actually did a scent the manosphere, I basically said, what would everybody in a manosphere be like if they're a fragrance? So I took 15 content creators and I assigned them a fragrance. Um, what other videos am I going to be dropping? Uh, I dropped uh, many. I'm doing these little. I'm doing a test right now. So if you haven't voted, go ahead and vote. When I do these mini uh, short videos, they can be anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes. Where you basically just see me kind of styling a quick little outfit to give you some style ideas. I'm try what I'm doing is I'm always I'm always evolving the content strategy, not just content to just upload a video and talking heads. Always pushing. One of the best things that every one of you can do is share this content. Do me, a, do, do me a major favor. Every time I upload a video, share it out to at least five people. Hit that share button on YouTube and share it out on Twitter, share it out on Facebook. Just click it and share it, and share it out. Spread the message. That's how we grow these movements. Um, I can tell you for a fact that when I was doing the Black Manosphere video, there were several content creators. When I typed them in to create a tag for a search tag form, it came up flagged. Yes, flagged for potential 
uh, potential uh, insensitive content, people's names. So I went into a database that said, you put this person's name in your video, you may get flagged because their name is flagged, not the video, their name. Got the screenshots, got the receipts. Also, if you're not following on Instagram, you need to follow on Instagram. I, I go live on Insta, I upload on Insta all the time because it's shorter content. And on Facebook, uh, I am going to, we're starting to build a community fan page to where all the CIA and FBI men can go. Next Sunday, I may have a co-host on the show. I'm always trying to do things. I'm trying to evolve the show all the time. I may actually have a co-host on the show next Sunday. Guys, you'll want to see this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll put it up on Instagram uh, or on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, she's a very, she's a popular blogger. She was actually a very accomplished blogger. And to say she's not hard on the eyes is an understatement. Y'all going to have to focus, okay? When I bring on the camera, you know, we're going to respect the people I bring on the panel. Like when I bring Nicole over here, y'all can't be simping out and thirsting out in the comment section. I don't bring on thoughts and trollops, but I do bring on fine women. And if there's going to be a woman, understand something. My content's always going to be men first, red pill. You got to worry about your boy tripping. All right, guys, that's it. I'm about to go... Uh, in here and finish doing what I got to do. Love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. Appreciate everybody for tuning in. I know it's late. We're going to get on up out of here. Until next time, talk at you later.